we have the honor and the privilege to welcome His Excellency Franz Jessen, former European Union ambassador to the Philippines. His Excellency Franz Jessen got his doctorate in economics from Virginia Tech. After a few years of teaching economics at the University of Southern Denmark, he started his career at the EU institution in Brussels, where he worked on EU East Asia affairs for more than 30 years. He was posted as a diplomat in Japan, China, Vietnam, and the Philippines. The two last posting as ambassador for the European Union. Ambassador France, welcome. Thank you. Good to be with you. So the first question <clears throat> that I will ask to you is related to the intellect. What's your vision between the ASEAN and European relationship for the next decade? Limitation, but also strengths. Thank you. My first job in foreign affairs was in fact working on the EU ASEAN matters. And we are talking about the 30 years ago. I've always felt that the, the two structures, the European Union structures and the, the ASEAN structure are seeking to bring countries together that have very similar and shared objectives. None of the countries in the European Union are superpowers. None of the countries in ASEAN are superpowers. We are all the 27 and the 10 mid-sized countries. And therefore it's important for us in a very objective manner to make sure that the international rule-based system is as strong as it can be. Because we have to make sure that we get our ideas, our opinions through by rules rather than by force. So my hope is that during the 10 years to come, this will be clear to both ASEAN and to the European Union in a very constructive way. We had a very good step last year where the strategic partnership was agreed. I think it was high time to agree a strategic partnership between the EU and ASEAN. Now we have it and we should make sure that we put content into that and they, we make sure that we work together on the international arena in order to promote the interest of what you can call the smaller countries of the world. There are, there are limitations to that and there are challenges to that. We see today that the, the world, if we're not careful, will be moved into a world where we get more and more separated into blocks. I don't think that serves our interest. I think that they, both the European Union and ASEAN have an interest in having an open multilateral system. And therefore, we should be very cautious not to lock ourselves into a, one or the other block. <clears throat> and we should be careful not to a, push other parts of the world away from us. We have seen how the a, multilateral trading system, the free trading system has benefited all of us. It has also develop, uh, benefited very strongly the developing world. We have seen that very much in Southeast Asia. And uh, we should maintain that. And we should make sure that we continue to work together as friends and uh, we continue to share our ideas. If we look at the European Union today, it's about 450 million people. ASEAN is not that different, it's bigger. It's 650 billion, uh, million people. Also, if we look at the economy, the European Union, of course, today is still much uh, more significant, but ASEAN is growing very fast. So as I see it, we are in a very, very real sense, two equal partners, and we should promote that partnership. So my hope is that uh, we will have an even better understanding of each other. This goes beyond political issues and economic issues. It also goes into cultural issues and they, we work together to promote our mutual interest and we make sure that the world continues to develop in the peaceful manner we have seen since the Second World War. Thanks, Ambassador Franz, for sharing this vision uh, between ASEAN and, and European relationship. And I do agree that it should be uh, go further beyond social and economic uh, 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 relationship, but also uh, uh, we should find a bridge uh, within the cultural aspect. 
So my second question will be more uh, focused uh, uh, on how is your purpose uh, in life and a message for the younger generation? You may share perhaps your experience in the Philippines and some key learning who may inspire the next generation of leaders. If you allow me, I will move to a, a either further to the east, I will move to Japan. Oh. It, one, one very big eye-opener for me when I started working in Japan was to see that they, the pride that people they took in their job. It, we often focus on the leaders, as you mentioned. <clears throat> we focus on the, the people who are bringing the world forward in a very significant way. But what I saw in Japan was that they, everybody was respected for the job that he or she did. And everybody would try to do his or her job in the best possible way. So. We have sometimes the impression that the, some jobs are better than others, that some jobs are more significant than others. And of course, there's a different economic impact of the different jobs. But I think it's important to see that they, no, matter, no matter what the person in front of you or that you are passing by on the street is doing, if that person is doing his or her best in that particular job, that earns a respect that should be given to that person. In a, Japan, to stay with that. Uh, I was often surprised to see even, for example, street cleaners and uh, how seriously they took their job and how well respected they were, that they were by the people who would pass by them. Mm. You would rarely see somebody passing by a street cleaner and just throwing a cigarette butt or something on the street. They would say, no, there's a person who works there to keep the streets clean and we have to respect that job. And I think that's one of the, the great strengths of the, the Japanese working culture that they, no matter what job you have, it is a job that other people they respect, even if it's low paid, even if it's a manual job. And they, therefore you have a harmony in the work environment that is very unusual and very, very constructive in Japan. So I think we have to also on the global scale, we have to look at each other and saying that, yes, it may be that this or that country is not quite as developed as the other country. But if the citizens of that country, they're working and they're doing their best to promote their own uh, livelihood, to promote their, their country, that ought to be respected uh, in a very, very full sense. And uh, we should uh, work together to make sure that not only the top jobs, the, the leaders of the world, that they, they are respected, but everybody is respected for what he or she is doing, if they're doing it in with their, their best uh, means, in the best way that they can do. So I think that's one thing that I would like to, to uh, suggest to the young generation, that they, you may not have the job of Bill Gates, uh, you may not be the next founder of uh, Microsoft, but if you're taking over the family business or you're taking over a job in a company that you try to do your very best and you try to respect not only yourself, but also the job that you're doing and the job that your colleagues around you, they are doing, then I think that they, we will be developing in an even better way than we are today. Thanks, uh, Ambassador Friends. I think that uh, uh, giving the example of Japan and I, I, I just uh, pinpoint uh, uh, our last speaker mentioned something very uh, interesting who connect with your, uh, your, 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 your though. It's, he said that uh, uh, life is uh, also the circle of life means that we are all interconnected. And I think that uh, 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 sharing this example that uh, uh, we should respect. And I think that in Japan, uh, uh, the culture and the idea of respect is, 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 is predominant. So I, I, I do, uh, join you on, on, on this idea. So we are already coming at the end of this uh, interview and, and my final uh, question that is mainly asking to all guest speakers to give uh, three keywords of your choice and you may explain these words. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'll give you three words that are linked to uh, my previous jobs that is uh, trying to promote a uh, international relations, relations between the European Union and the ASEAN. And there, the three words that I would suggest would be to, to analyze, to maintain a moral compass, and to seek opportunities. 
What I mean by that is that by analyzing, you have to look at the situation in front of you without jumping to conclusions too quickly. It is very easy to come to a new country as a diplomat and say that, oh, what I see here is not as good as what I came from. My own country is doing things in a different way and it's probably a better way. And they also when you see political developments in a country or the political discussion in a country, you may have the feeling that they, oh, what you have from your own background is more constructive and more productive. Um, it is very typical for an ambassador, for example, a, or a diplomat working in a foreign country, when you get visitors from your home a country, the first thing that the, the visitor is doing is very often to compare the situation in front of him or her a, with what the visitor knows from back home. So instead of looking at what is happening in the country that you are in, a, you start comparing. And I think that's not the best way to move forward. I think it's better to, to analyze, to sit back, take your time, try to understand what is going on in the country. And then later on, try to see the, or understand the domestic logic in the country that you're working in. How come this country are, is doing things in a different way than you do back home? Uh, what is it that motivates them? And then we come to the moral compass you start putting in sort of like, how does this work compared to what you would like to see? And uh, that is not only vis-a-vis -vis the country, but it's also vis-a-vis -vis your own job mm -hmm. and uh, your own institutions that uh, you try to maintain a sense of you are trying to do the right thing. And I think we have, if we see things that are not the right thing, I think we have the obligation to step up and say to our political leadership it could be, or to the host country, that they, yes, uh, I have a slightly different view on one or the other situation. For example, I mentioned the free uh, trading system. We have the multilateral system. I think mm -hmm. if you believe in that, then it's important that you're in your job, you try to promote that in the way that you can do in the best, uh, best way. So uh, you should not be too swayed by short-term changes in uh, political ideas or outlook, a new government, but you should, of course, work loyally with your government, but you should maintain your own self um, sense of moral compass, that uh, you try to do the right thing in a moral way. And there I have great respect when you see from time to time, for example, you see diplomats are stepping down because they feel that they, this is no longer what they would like to see, mm. uh, what they, is happening in their country. And I think then it's better just to step down instead of trying to, uh, to change your own ideas if you fundamentally believe that they, your previous ideas were the right ones. Then seek opportunities. I think that they, one of the great strengths as a diplomat, that is that they, you see things in other countries and you can learn from them. And you can bring things back home and you can see that they, if we take this from the Philippines or from Vietnam or from Japan or from China, the countries I've worked in, uh, then they, we can do things in a slightly better way back home. So uh, that is what I mean by seeking opportunities, that they, you try to bring what, the, what you think is the best from your own background and you try to take what you see is the best from the new situation that you're placed in, the new country that you're learning from. And they, that can be as simple as economic opportunities. It can be that they, for example, they, in the EU, the labor force is getting older. Uh, the labor force in ASEAN is relatively young. And just by that fact, then you have the opportunity to develop a new economic activities where Europe is exporting capital to ASEAN and using the labor force in ASEAN to produce goods for Europe, uh, where ASEAN then would get the technology in return as uh, the, their benefit from, from this interaction. So I think analysis without being judgmental and then having your moral compass, what is it that you seek to achieve? and then to exploit the mutual opportunities and the mutual benefit of the relationship. That would be the three words that I would suggest. Thanks, Ambassador Franz, uh, for sharing these uh, three keywords, analyze, compass, and opportunities.
Our next guest speaker will be Mr. Pradeep Pariyar from Nepal. Mr. Pariyar has been nominated by the World Economic Forum Young Global Leaders 2020 for his contribution in empowering the youth and promoting social justice. Thanks again, Ambassador Franz Jessen, for your support and hope to see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Very good to see you. Yeah.